you are watching the big debate uh, with me gauri tivedi all eyes of course now on president donald trump's uh, visit uh, to india and uh, of course the larger impact this could have in terms of uh, well uh, pok kashmir and of course on whether or not it has anything to do with the uh, afghan peace process that is also getting finalized as we speak um, with me here uh, in the studio is uh, mr uh, deshratan nigam uh, uh, sumit meer a political analyst uh, and uh, representing the bjp is uh, mr sharma thank you all right so you know as we talk about uh, whether whether the uh, the afghan deal uh, the peace deal could pave the way for a larger discussion around pok is something that let's uh, praise that you know of course they are not related totally but nevertheless the fact is uh, they have implications over each other uh, mr nigam let me start with you you know the fact that the afghan peace deal happens right now has huge implications for india india is not even a member and a part of the entire negotiations that have had so far uh, but could that be a handle that uh, the prime minister could use in terms of now focusing on pok So the fact remains, whatever deal may be arrived at by between you know Taliban, Pakistan, and US, it is incomplete without India. Any development that is supposed to take in Pakistan or peace or stability cannot take without the intervention of India. And because <laughs> India has tremendous amount of goodwill in Afghanistan, and it it has also we all know that Afghanistan Parliament has been built by India, and therefore. a uh, lot of infrastructure work is going on and and the dam that was inaugurated the which is the lifeline in afghanistan is also been built by india so people of afghanistan know that it is a country which believes in development and progress of afghanistan yes uh, india has been by and large able to convince the entire world so far as poj and k and ladakh is concerned and pakistan has been isolated so is china malaysia and turkey on all international forum and they have not had even a formal statement from these international bodies therefore i think by and large in, this is india's pro issue and india should solve it on its own if other countries stand with india it would be a bonus and and i don't think that we need to beg or uh, you know ask something from the american president uh, but i think internationally also people know the world knows the organizations know and the countries know the legal and constitutional position of kashmir and including that occupied by the pakistan so nobody on even the pakistan could not go to international court of justice on this issue they wanted to but then they were probably advised not to go because they are not on a sound legal footing so i think america also understand most of the countries do understand this is an internal matter and one day it has it has to be a part of india maybe sooner than later mm. sumit peer you want to come in there i think uh, ma'am the point here is that uh, when president trump is trying to negotiate a peace deal with pakistan which includes afghanistan or you know afghanistan and pakistan there has to be something in return which president trump has to pro promise to afghanistan now the point which we have to see what does president donald trump has to offer to afghanistan and a part of it has to also go to pakistan because he needs some where pakistan into it as far as our uh, position on pok is concerned and kashmir kashmir is our integral part pok is our part which is under the control of pakistan which we have to take i think the only message which we can uh, talk to president trump is look this is our part we are going to take it we need your support as in when we decide to do it because if you have your interest in afghanistan we have our interest in pok you know you can wage a war against somebody they say go okay, so many americans are killed in last so many years 42000 indians are also killed by this pakistan and its agents so if we do any military action against pakistan to consolidate our interests should be taken in the pursue or in the light of national interest of india because at the end of the day we have to protect our civilians we have 1.3 billion population of 16 of the world humanity we in the world population so we have every right to do whatever takes in our interest and we are naturalized kindly support us on that okay. because pakistan is an extension to china that's all we have to say we don't have to ask for his support can american troops help us do you sanction our you know taking pok we'll do it when we want it 
just you be our friend and be our side because pakistan is on the side of china you be on our side so that it doesn't ex escalate into anything bigger than that let it be a india pakistan issue we'll set it and, and ma'am my position on pakistan is always pakistan is our problem we have to go and fix it nobody is going to fight our wars gray lists and black lists and blue lists are not going to help us unless and until we have the firm resolve to fix pakistan in the long run national interest and we want our okay, generations right. to be peaceful okay all right so kc sharma come in there the larger question that is there that beyond this being just a spectacle uh, what could be the larger takeaways for india you know there is enough and more on the table as far as donald trump is concerned but for india what could be the key takeaways could be okay or be one of them as far as my understanding is or information is the focus will be on a terrorism and uh, we would discuss in a depth how to stop it and how to uh, push the pakistan so that pakistan uh, agencies should stop supporting the terrorists and the major terrorist uh, terrorist activity are in a pok since the pok is the part of legally the part of india so we we may discuss like we can have uh, some bigger uh, action over there just like we did it uh, surgical strike as well as the air strike we might uh, need to do or we may do a similar kind of the thing in a future as well so the focus will be the terrorism if terrorism uh, get solved so it will be the beneficial for the pakistan hindustan as well as for the afghanistan if uh, america has a interest in afghanistan the equal interest uh, the india is also india is also having in afghanistan india is doing a lot of infrastructure work in afghanistan which is supporting entire world including the american if um, if india do not do the infrastructure work then that has to be done by the america so there will be the extra burden on to the america the america understand that uh, uh, importance so i'm sure america will uh, take india in a loop while uh, discussing or finalizing whatever the treaty in afghanistan second thing focus will be on a terrorism so indirectly uh, pok might not be in a focus because that is the internal part of the india and india doesn't want uh, anybody to include in, into the matter of uh, pok but surely we'll be discussing on a uh, terrorism and we'll be making entire world again uh, aware of what sort of the activity pakistan is supporting okay. and uh, how the but that he already activity. knows so you don't need to make him aware of that no, he already knows is, that no, no, they already know but the we have to reiterate in front of the entire world because pakistan is trying to make a small small uh, announcement like they are their uh, court are giving the judgment and they they are putting the terrorists behind the bar they are putting a lot of the res uh, restrictions so they are doing a lot of fake activity so the india have, has to reiterate and again so entire world and you uh, think washington is not able to see through it the, the thing is the thing is the wa washing, uh, washington has to tell it on <coughs> uh, in front of uh, in entire world with uh, our prime minister so it will make a, a lot of positive but then, impact but then the larger question is what's the leverage we have to ensure that we get uh, a larger discussion on pok going i think mr nigam wants to come see, in see let me tell you uh, once you talk terrorism then pojk will certainly come up because for pakistan uh, the entire substratum for terrorism is kashmir and therefore it is bound to come up and secondly we india has to assure if if at all the issue of ca and religious freedom is raised all misconceptions us misconceptions if they have any have to be removed by the indian side now apart from terrorism what i also see is that india has lot of defense requirements which india is now you know trying to you know Uh, take it from united states and which it is in favor of united states it helps them it helps their economy as well and also we are able to you know meet our defense requirements which were not met for a very long time now second is the strategic convergence which is also very important in view of china see once china is on the table then the issue of you know indo pacific uh, command comes up the issue of quad that has been informal grouping that has been created south china sea role of india in the neighborhood because india's influence is growing and also the you know safety of the trade routes in indian ocean which is an all weather ocean so all these things would be you know have to be there a space cooperation in space technology and nuclear technology is also a front which is which is to be explored and because there is a lot of cooperation already going on in that area so trade deal yes i believe it will be after the november elections whoever comes to power in in uh, united states will you know apply its mind on the trade deal because trump does not want to give that kind of signal that too much concession is being given as i said on your program yesterday also 
that India has been removed from GSP, that preferential treatment. Therefore, higher duties have been, you know, imposed on iron and steel and aluminium. And uh, India has also, in a retaliatory manner, has imposed higher duties on 36 items, including almonds and apples. So, trade deal will probably be addressed and issued after the November elections. And uh, that probably <coughs> is politically good for USA. But we can, you know, have patience and wait for some time. And uh, I so think. So, what are we going to get in return? Is in, my question. See, in, in return is the is is about strategic convergence, the larger picture, trade that could be minor concessions here and there, but I am not expecting any big deal. But India's role as as a you know international player in the world politics, geopolitics, is well recognized, and that will be further cemented in this. Maybe in terms of trade, there may not be many gains immediately, but the groundwork would be laid down now. Okay, so, so so you know before I get in Pramit Pal Chaudhary, Sumit Peer, the question is that uh, when you talk about the Afghan peace process yeah. being finalized, Afghan deal almost on the verge uh, of being uh, sealed, it has ramifications for India as well. The fact that India has not been part of the entire process, one can yeah. turn around and say because you know we were not willing to have our boots on ground and so yeah. on and so forth. But the fact is we've not been part of the entire process, but we will be facing the consequences given the fact it is bound to lead to some sort of a backlash as well. Do you think that can be a handle that uh, at some point of time can be used or spoken in terms of uh, negotiations? Yeah, why not? Because, you know, when US, let's imagine they move out of Afghanistan, now we have to look at a newer threat. It is Pakistan plus Taliban combined together. We don't know which way they are going to turn. Today, U.S. troops are keeping at least the Taliban busy in Afghanistan, so their sphere of influence is more over limited to Afghanistan. The moment you have U.S. moving out of it, these guys might want to look to India, who knows? Mm -hmm. And then your Pakistani jihadi forces, which are already there, there are Pakistani organizations. So those are Indian concerns? Yeah, those are mm -hmm. Indian concerns. So there are jihadis who are in Afghanistan and Pakistan. They operate in both sides of the border. So there, the moment America moves out of uh, Afghanistan, our security in, uh, risks increase. So this has to be a part of negotiation because... Amplified US security concerns of India. Ours, yes, and US is our biggest trading partner. Mm -hmm. They need India. So in this deal, what Nigam Sahib rightly said, our interests need to be protected. We may not be a part of the deal, but whatever the deal leaves behind that, that has to be protected. Our interests okay. need to be addressed too. Okay, Pramit Pal Chaudhary joining us as well. Mr. Chaudhary, now the larger question is that when you talk about POK, there is a certain position that the Indian government has taken all along. And now, do you expect a larger narrative and a, and a, and a bigger push in terms of uh, the focus now being on POK? Um, as far as the Indian government is concerned, uh, yes, we've been making it very clear that since we amended Article 370, Pakistan is no longer uh, relevant or, or has any say in what happens on the Indian side of Kashmir. Uh, the, gen the whole idea is that Kashmir should eventually, Jammu and Kashmir should eventually just become a normal Indian state and Pakistan will have no more say in the status of JNK than it does on the status of Bihar or, or uh, Andhra Pradesh. So that is, jet, the, that is very clearly the policy that we're, the path that we're now following. Uh, and India has made it clear that if Pakistan wishes to discuss Kashmir, as Pakistan insists that it will, can still do, the only thing that will be discussed and the only thing that can be India is prepared to talk about is the status of POK mm. uh, and not about the Indian side of Kashmir. What is happening here is already fixed. So therefore, the game is now slowly to not only get Pakistan to recognize that there will be no dialogue on Kashmir because there's nothing yeah. left to talk about, except, as I said, about what happens on the status of POK. Uh, and we presume Pakistan is not interested in talking about that. It is also imperative, but we're now slowly making the rest of the international community to come and accept that same position, which is that Article 370, the change in Article 370, the end of special status, for Kashmir means that even when we used to say we were prepared to talk about Kashmir on a bilateral state uh, level, even that policy is now over. And you'll notice we have already gotten uh, four of the P5 countries to say that Kashmir is effectively mm. a 
unilateral or yes. a domestic issue yes. as far as they are concerned. Hmm. Uh, in other words, they are now moving, we're slowly getting the rest of the international community to accept that position. Okay. So, so can this then mean that there can be a proactive push towards uh, Pakistan occupied Kashmir? That's my question. Can Prime Minister Modi and uh, President Trump have that conversation right now? Can we move beyond the spectacle into these uh, nitty gritties? Mr. Chaudhary? It's not clear to me that Mr. President Trump has any clear idea about Kashmir. While he has repeatedly said that he's offered, he's prepared to mediate between India and Pakistan on Kashmir, keep in mind that he's also offered to mediate between the Arabs and the Israelis, between Britain and Ireland, between North and South Korea. He has offered to mediate in any conflict anywhere in the world. Uh, and it seems that his primary motive is not strategic or driven by any foreign policy concern. Uh, all the reports out of Washington are is that he wants a Nobel Peace Prize. He believes that Barack Obama received a Peace Prize for doing very little, and he doesn't see any reason why he can't get one as well. So he offers to mediate, and then if the, any country says we're not interested, he backs off and moves on. I mean, it's no, there's no real attempt or any sensible means of methodology behind what he does. So my sense is that India will be just happy for Trump to basically say, uh, as he has said, that my friend Modi has said he will handle Kashmir, uh, America's fine with that. Uh, and that's all I think India would be, would be all right with. Hmm. So that's the best that we're going to get Ma out of it. This is the point I have been making. I agree with Mr. Chaudhary. I said, you know, President Donald Trump wants to be seen as the big guy who can fix any problem of the world which has been there for 30, 40, 50 years. That basically enhances his image. And I've been always saying that this is all semantics and optics, what Mr. Chaudhary said, for, you know, pleasing the domestic audiences and the international audience to pick, uh, uh, you know, paint that big boy American picture. But at the end of the day, Mr. Trump does not take any adamant pushes on mediation. That what he is that if he wanted he could have taken so for people in Pakistan to start jumping that you know President Donald Trump is going to mediate because in a matter of fact there's nothing to mediate the only unfinished part of agenda is POK and POK we are going to go and get anyway we just need a support of a friend hmm. because we, are, we don't want it to spill beyond India and Pakistan we don't want China and others to get involved okay. that's all we need okay but the moment Simple. you talk about Pakistan occupied Kashmir obviously China Chinese interests come in there okay which is why of course it's far more tricky I think KC Sharma wants to come in yeah actually uh, I want to make sure two three more comments uh, it will be also the transfer of the technology and cooperation into the, in the field of the technology it might not be the uh, full-fledged uh, you can say trade deal but indirectly the small small pieces which are very very important for India we need the transfer of the technology and cooperation into the futuristic technologies it is in the field of IT as well as into the space I'm sure this budget is gonna help out a lot India from these two uh, point of view from the mm. space point of view and IT point of view in the IT field we are getting uh, internet of things we are getting a uh, machine learning we are getting uh, so many things which can give us the employment to the millions of the new uh, new graduates are coming into the India so I think the, it will be the benefit uh, beneficial for the India from that point of view second thing is the f India's focus will be on the terrorism, ending the terrorism and taking a strong action against the terrorism. If in if uh, US, which uh, already we have seen, supports and back the India, whatever India is doing against the terrorism, it is good. We support and uh, we appreciate it. I think it is good enough for us. Pakistan brings the POK. Pakistan brings the uh, uh, Kashmir into the limelight or discussion. That that doesn't make a lot of difference because they already do it and they always do it. But if the word talk about the terrorism, that is the uh, that is the thing like okay. our narrative. That is the our narrative, and people should understand it. Okay. Yes, Mr. Nigam wants to come in. Yeah. See, the fact is, uh, mediation. Let me tell you, I'm a senior mediator myself. Mediation is a process that can only start if both the parties agree, or the multi parties there agree for mediation. It can never move forward even if somebody offers mediation. 
So here, India has made it very no, but clear. We, our stand has been very consistent, so, sir. So therefore, you therefore, were not like Nehru, but you know the stand has been very consistent since then. So, that no mediation. Yes. Yeah, the fact is, no. Mm. After 1971, it became mm. very clear. Till mm. Nehru, there was no Shimla Agreement. Please remember that. Yes. That dispute was converted into bilateral issue mm. by Shimla Agreement. Okay. So Nehru is out of the picture. Yes. So there's no mm. question of agreeing or not mm. agreeing with Nehru on this issue. So, but the fact remains. Not in the Congress, but yeah. Yeah. Mm. But the fact remains that. U.S. moving out of Afghanistan is leaving a vacuum and Correct. making lot of Taliban's free, free with their with their equipment and explosives and machinery, which might come towards Kashmir. That's mm. a matter of concern, and I and think, who's going to rein them in? Yeah, and, and and I think Indian government is fully capable. The, you have seen the muscular policy on the ground, which has been you know each day few terrorists are being killed. Yes, that is the way they have to be responded, even if they're they are being assisted by bat of Pakistan. So now, secondly, you know, uh, patience <coughs> is one of the biggest virtue. India is not to rush things because when you rush things, you might be able to, you know, fall in the trap, diplomatic trap of the U.S. So here, you have to lay down, and China, I believe, will be the central issue. Knowingly, what is the diplomatic trap, sir? See, diplomatic trap is the concessions that uh, you know in trade that uh, U.S. wants. Lot of you know. Uh, uh, no tariffs, nothing, and this. On, but this on is not about trade. Yeah, this yeah. is about you know some of the strategic interests whether it's they converge no, or not. Yeah. Strategic interests do converge, as okay. I've already pointed out. Okay. No, no, no. Yeah. Another, another issue is that China is the central issue, not Pakistan. When India and because you have lot of challenges and opportunities both today, in uh, for benefiting the economy of both the countries. So that is to be grabbed, and if these two leaders fail to grab it, then they would be doing injustice to their own respective people. Okay. So Pramit Pal Chaudhary, the amplified security concerns that India has after after uh, uh, the peace deal is signed, after the withdrawal of U.S. troops, uh, do you think America would be addressing any of those? Mr. Chaudhary, is my voice reaching you? Okay, Sumit, why don't you take that till we connect that and fix that audio? Ma'am, honestly, if the US wants a stable Pakistan to be, remain and be in the future, they have to address our concerns. Because, you know, America has done a historical blunder when they wanted Mujahideen to be used against Russia. But when, they, when the Russian story was done, they left those weapons there, which created the Afghanistan of today. What did that Afghanistan do? That we all know. So the historical blunders, you must, U.S. must draw lessons and not remind. So if you want to withdraw from Pakistan, Afghanistan in your own interest, very good, do it. But do not leave this problem for us because we'll protect our side. The moment we insulate our borders, these people will again start looking to you or they will start disturbing somebody else. So our interests have to be sacrosanct because we are your biggest strategic partner. And when you look at your trade deficit also, if you want to decrease your trade deficit, still have dependence on Asian markets or Asian inputs, we are the best country to support you. You know, you know, you have a trade surplus of 20, we have a trade trade surplus of 25 billion dollars yes. with them. China has a deficit of 350 billion dollars with them. So in order to balance the trade, in order for future growth, they need India. And in the South, you know, in the Indian Ocean, we are the dominating force. South okay. Asia. South China Sea is still a sea. We control the ocean. So you have to look in the long run that if I withdraw, I might not leave trouble for my partner to handle. Because at the end of the day, we are no, trouble. President Trump good. also needs to win an election. I don't think he's thinking beyond nine months right now. No, he. I mean, the deal has to consider India's interest. I'm not saying that the we... The deal is signed, sir. Almost, yeah. uh, almost done. Yeah. India's interests have to be considered. Okay, yeah, yes. Okay. Yes, see, and then, then Kishore Patel, yeah. See, for both India and, uh, and USA, <laughs> They don't need a stable Pakistan. We know what happened in 26-11, who were the people involved and where the trace led to. We also know that uh, Pakistan does not want a peaceful India and a stable India and has been trying to create a lot of problems. So it is in India's interest also, an American interest so far as terrorism is concerned, the Pakistan is not stable, the government is not stable. And therefore, there should be an effort to pressurize Pakistan in whichever manner, whether to, through trade, you know, boycott or through stopping all kinds of aid or stopping even sale of weaponry you know and that is are the aspects that have to be kept in mind 
a strong and stable pakistan is a threat to international peace and stability hmm. yes kc sharma as far as i understand america is briefing continuously whatever the peace process they are discussing or talking with the taliban and uh, and pakistan and uh, what briefing i think briefing the indian government and uh, no, also india is not even part the, of the process india is not a directly part but the continuously because we are involved heavily into the infrastructure as well as into the many project in afghanistan but uh, uh, in the process of discussion america is continuously briefing our officers and government what they want to do and how they want to do and what Mr. i Sharma, what the I, biggest grievance that no, foreign policy minute. officers have is that they poured in billions of dollars in afghanistan and they are not yeah. part of the peace process yeah. what are you saying what i'm saying what time say oh, please try to understand we are not a directly part of that is fine we are trying to get it but american government is still briefing us another thing is they also understand our concerns and third i'm a optim uh, optimistic person if they withdraw from the afghanistan they have to support india so that india can take care of the afghanistan okay. india can provide the forces but the equipment support and and uh, the expense has to bear by the uh, american american know it american like the we do not have a very big uh, uh, trade uh, trade deficit uh, with the america um, and we are trying to buy the uh, the uh, you can say defense products defense equipment from the america which we need so america has to pass on some benefit to the india in the terms of the technology or uh, or in the cooperation or in the being uh, optimistic is good but yes. so is being realistic you know no, that there is a no, difference in being optimistic the, uh, the, even the and president the, uh, from ha, ha, reality 30 second okay. 30 second even the president has acknowledged multiple times modi ji is hitting very hard uh, when he is doing the negotiation so modi is not going to okay. uh, lose anything which is not good for the india okay. he he is he is going to make sure all right uh, okay everything okay. should come okay. to the okay. india okay pramit pal choudhury then you know the question still remains that india's big grievance has been that we poured in billions of dollars in the afghan infrastructure whether it is dams and so on and so forth but we went born given a table on the negotiating uh, we won't given a chair on the negotiating table and now with amplified security concerns is america going to address those is president trump going to address those um because uh, no because the fundamental problem remains that we did not provide for the security of mm. the, in the war in any in any war situation you receive a chair at the table if you provide ground. military support we did not provide very we provided very little military equipment and we have never provided soldiers uh, partly because america didn't allow us at least in the initial phase of the war uh but ultimately even though we have given about 4 or 5 billion dollars of worth of aid to afghanistan mm. keep in mind that the military effort in afghanistan for the united states today costs almost 50 billion dollars a year um so ultimately the american view is that india's support for the afghan government is good but on the military side india's provisions have been relatively weak and you'll notice that the trump administration has actually called upon us and said well are you prepared to send soldiers and india said that's no. not something no. we, mm. we a path we are prepared to go down mm. So look, but the point is that the Indian side has been hearing from the Americans now for 15 years, in beginning with the first Obama administration, that they will leave. Obama announced it three or four times in public, I'm going to leave. Nothing happened. Trump has been trying for the past 5 years to leave. He still hasn't left. The pre US presence has declined, uh and the amount of troops there is now probably down to somewhere about the 12 to 13,000 range. But the fact is that even in the present announcement that Trump has made, he has basically said we'll have a ceasefire uh and we will see over the next 3 or 4 months what happens and then we will begin to negotiate a a a, a with steady withdrawal. But each of the time they've tried to do this it has failed. My sense is that given that the Pentagon, the US intelligence agencies and the Department of Homeland okay. Security are strongly against a withdrawal. you will see as has happened with obama a long guerrilla war between the bureaucracy mm. and the president to stop anything happening and keep in mind trump's only interest is the fact that he has an election in november exactly. that he has to win exactly. so he wants and he has promised his constituency that i will leave so all he has to do is look like he has a ceasefire mm. in afghanistan and say i'm going to be leaving it's all happened we're still negotiating yes. but I've got a peace agreement with the Taliban. Yes. And what happens after November I suspect he doesn't really care. 
But between exactly. now and November, he just has to look like he's trying to get out of Afghanistan. All right. And, and that, I suspect, is what we'll, all that we'll see happening over the next one year. And remains to be seen how much of India is really going to figure in all those talks. Uh, all right. With that, it's a wrap on this edition of the very special debate ahead of President Trump's uh, visit. Uh, slipping into a break, coming back on the other side and asking the key question that is there now going to be a complete revamp as far as India's sporting culture is concerned? Uh, Halo India Games uh, tournament being launched uh, uh, by Prime Minister Modi uh, as far as <laughs> university games are concerned. Will that lead to a revamp in India's sporting culture is the key question. For more such videos, subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel, hit the bell icon.